It's been a long time, but we're back, folks, on TV20 for the Cleveland Muni Football Championships. And it's a big change from two years ago. John, we got more divisions, more teams. And today, we're starting with a 12U Junior Bantam. Tell us, what's that all about? Well, Tim, it's about more opportunities for our players and our families to join our league. Uh, we realized that 12U had a huge void. Uh, they needed their own division. We provided it for them, and the organizations have stepped up to the plate with great quality play this year. And it's been a fantastic season for the kids this, uh, in this division. They've gotten a chance to play, develop, and the coaches are, are very pleased with the results, especially these two teams, Tim, who's landed in the championship. And when we're talking about them, we hear these names all the time, the Garden Valley Falcons and the Collinwood Cobras. Tell us a little bit about those two teams. Well, the Garden Valley uh, uh, um, Garden Valley Falcons, they uh, won three games, lost three games. They're five and three overall. Head coach Danny Solomon, along with Dantes Howard, the offensive coordinator, and Cadell Gaines, the defensive coordinator, just did a fantastic job this year of, uh, of shutting teams down, but uh, made it here to the playoffs. The playoff wins have been 20 to nothing over the Air, uh, Ohio Cardinals, and they beat Glenville by one point, squeaking it out 14 to 13. The Collinwood Cobras, uh, they'll be in the black. They were five and one, so people think that they're favored. A lot of fans and a lot of support on that side uh, of this championship. Mike Crutchfield is the head coach, along with Kevin Leonard, the offensive coordinator, and Shanti Swint, the defensive coordinator. Their playoff wins have been against Youngstown Rand, where they squeaked it out two to nothing, and the defense stepped up again in week two in the semifinals and beat the Southside Seahawks six to nothing. So. Uh, they're looking to shut down this Garden Valley team. Well, as you can see, the kids are ready to go. It's windy. It's cold. We're not going to waste any time, but we're going to go over to our PA announcer and our league director, Jason Dunn, for the player introductions. Welcome to the Collinwood Athletic Complex for the 2021 Junior Bantam 12U Division Championship game between the Garden Valley Falcons and Collinwood Cobras. This matchup is a rematch from the 2019 Pee Wee Division Championship. We're going to start with the player introductions for the Garden Valley Falcons. Number one, Jovante Abernathy. Number two, Dyshawn Atkins. Number three, Christian Robinson Gaines. Number four, Jayon Payne. Number five, Justin Chambers. Number seven, Amir Harris. Number eight, Sheridan Simpson. Number nine, Dakari Nelson. Number 10, Aaron Lamar. Number 11, Keon Taylor. Number 13, Joel McLeod. Number 14, Darion Clayton. Number 15, Xavier Everett. Number 17, Michael Owens. Number 18, Deshaun Powell. Number 19, Jalen Offord. Number 20, Jaheem Edwards. Number 21, Nico Nelson Jr. Number 22, Gavin Smetley. Number 24, Dayon Owens. Number 25, Tavale Steele Jr. Number six, Richard Amy Jr. 
Number 29, Lanelle Hopkins. And number 30, Amir Ferguson. Your junior Bantam Division, Garden Valley Falcons. Now for the player introduction for the Collinwood Cobras. Number one, Rondell Dungy Jr. Number two, Antonio Robinson. Number three, Javion Levitt. Number four, Demarion Johnson. Number six, Kamari Pippen Johnson. Number seven, Terrence Jenkins Jr. Number eight, Anthony Woodle. Number 10, Kobe Chester Leon. Number 11, Eric Green Jr. Number 14, Jamaria Williams. Number 15, Zakir Cromedy Payton. Number 16, Jaden Willis. Number 20, Cameron Scott. Number 21, Simi Bowden. The second, the third. 23, Ardell Freeman. Number 44, Chris Hampton. Number 50, Jacob Doss. Number 56, Martel Mann Jr. Number 90, Aaron Canty. Number 92, Samaj Ellison. Number 96, Cleveland Moore. And number 99, Christopher Lucius. Now, introduction of the coaches, starting with the Garden Valley. Garden Valley is coordinated by Danny Solomon, who's also head coach. Off of the coordinator, Dante Howard. D for the coordinator, Codell Gaines. And assistant coach, Cy Coven Sr. The Collinwood Cobras. Organizational coordinator, Darnell Coach Buck Banks. Head coach, Mike Crutchfield. Off of the coordinator, Shante Swint. D for the coordinator, Kevin Leonard. Assistant coaches, Ken Rogers, Vince Maxwell, and Dave Mitchell. Let's give it up for both teams. Now at this time, I would ask everybody to stand for the playing of the National Anthem.
pregame ceremonies. Right now we're about two minutes away and before we do that, we're gonna take a look, first of all, at the rules of the game. And John, those modifications of those rules, let's talk about them. Got Tim here today and with the Junior Bantam rules. Uh, we follow the National Federation of Ohio High School rules. Uh, eight minute quarters, a regulation clock with four timeouts per game. Use them any time, one additional timeout in overtime. There's no kickoffs. Punts, coaches decide, automatic or they're actually gonna punt. Scoring, traditional touchdown is six points, safety is two points. Ball punted from the 20 yard line, extra points, uh, a kick uh, equal two points and run or pass the ball into the end zone after a touchdown is the conventional one point. And when you take a look at the officials, they're all certified through the Ohio High School Athletic Association, a veteran crew that we will have here today that will be doing today's game. On the left is Bruce Hill. He's a graduate of Hawken High School, 31 years as an official. He's retired as a probation officer. In the middle is the line judge. That's Mel Parker, 1988 graduate of Aviation High, 16 years as an official. He owns his own construction company. And on the right, Bill Myers, head linesman. He's also a 1990 graduate of Mid Park High School, 26 years as an official. And he is a center manager in the Division of Recreation for the city of Cleveland. A very good crew at that. We expect a great game. John, obviously, when you were talking about weather like today, which they're telling us right now, down on the field, we're probably looking maybe in about the 48 degree mark. Wind is going to definitely play a role. But thank you, Lord, no rain. The rain is held up. And we look at some of the keys to the game. And again, there are two good teams, John. We talked about them before. Let's take a look at them right now. Yep, the Garden Valley uh, Falcons, they uh, don't want any turnovers today, especially with these slippery conditions and uh, inclement weather. Uh, they want a physical matchup. They want to play tough. They are good tackling. Collinwood, they want to avoid the penalties, no mental mistakes. Uh, Coach Buck and his organization, those guys pride themselves on that, execute offense and control the game and stop the run with the defense, which they've done very well so far in these playoffs with blanking their opponents on their way to this championship game here today. Some of the key players for Garden Valley, you got the quarterback, Javante Abernathy, two touchdowns, four touchdown runs, two extra point runs. Number two, the slot, Deshaun Atkins scored six touchdowns this year. He's a good tack. Good hands and a good tackler. And number 30, the offensive uh, tackle, defensive tackle, Amir Ferguson, tough, good blocker and tackler. Likes to run behind him for those tough yards. On the other side, Collinwood Cobras must protect the ball. Christopher Lucius, number 99, tough, good blocker and a tackler, dominates the defense. Running back, offensive, uh, outside linebacker, Antonio Robinson, a solid running back, scored three touchdowns and quarterback. Kamir Pippen, Johnson, lead by example, great attitude, great leader, six touchdowns, smart, and has a very bright future in the game of football and in the game of life. Well, you can see they had a penalty right off the bat, but again, they're gonna try to run right behind the right guard, and you're talking about- They got the big fella the ball. Running the football. It's a good job right there. Got a big fella just trying to keep his feet moving, but gang tackling was able to, Copers was able to slow him down. Again, a very active defense, a very tough defense. Here it is again, you can see as they go off to the left side, he's got the ball in the, in the wrong hand on the inside. He had to switch it around. He dropped it and it was actually picked back up by his teammate. Didn't get the number, but a good job of the awareness to jump on the football. You can't be switching hands in the middle of traffic. The big fella, Starting the game off with almost a turnover, but Garden Valley able to come up with it. It'll be second down and about 11. Just underway, first quarter action. We'll play eight minute quarters. And Big the run line. all the way to the outside. And again, a drag down tackle by number one. Javon 
Abernathy. Yeah, good job there by the right the right side of that offensive line collapsing down. Like you see the big guys getting a, a, a hat on a hat and doing a good job of bouncing outside. Atkins finding some uh, daylight and getting out, picking up about eight yards, making third down and convertible right here for the Falcons on their first possession. Third down, we'll call it about a long, well, maybe two or three here. They're running in a big hole behind the big right guard. He did a great job blocking there, John. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. A good job again by the running back. The Garden Valley and that offensive line got a real good push, smelling that first down and getting it. Now they're over across the midfield into uh, the Cobra territory. First down and 10. They went behind their right guard, Amir Ferguson, did a nice job opening up that hole. Cobras are in the black and blue. They're starting with the football. They hit him in the backfield, and as soon as he got the ball, somebody wasn't blocked. It was number 11, Kayon Taylor. Yeah, he arrived in a nasty, uh, nasty mood too, Tim. See right here. He get the football off. He's in the backfield right away, along with his teammate. Second down, we'll call it 12. Five and a half to go. We got Ralph King in the house. He's going to help us on any officials' calls. He's been refereeing a long time. Big games. He'll be here to tell us a little bit about the play since we won't be able to hear the ref today. Oh, the big fellow in the back. Get out to the outside. Good speed. And he finally steps out of bounds at the 25 yard line. They were talking about that speed, John, to us. We saw it right there. Yeah, it's a good job right there. Uh, by the Collarwood Cobras offensive line. The big fella's in the backfield. He just turns it and hands it off to his running back, Pippen Johnson. Finds some daylight. Again, like you said, Tim, showing good speed and, 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 and eye awareness. Running the daylight until he runs out of bounds. Five minutes to go here in the first quarter, just under. Cobras trying to control the ball, and they're doing just that. Stiff arms number one, then comes up oh. and another great tackle. We talked about the defense, and they came up big right there. <laughs> yeah, good job there by, by Atkins, I believe it is. Or is that number eight? No, that's number two. Number two, yeah. Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, good job by him coming up and, and smacking, smacking the running back, bringing him down for a, a little bit of no gain or a loss. He's a league all-star. Coach told us, as you mentioned, John, before, he's one of the keys to their game. Savvy player in this 12-year division. Getting a chance to show his talents. Uh-oh, that defense is they're smelling blood now, Tim. They're taking a stand. It was number 25, Tavell Steele, the left number defensive end. This time by number 25, Tavell Steele. Yeah, he was able to collapse down on that side of football, beating Scott and Ellison to the punch. It's getting penetration. All oh, this whole host of teammates is right there behind him to give him support. Third down, we're going to call it about 20. They got a long way to go here. Nice picture, Mr. 20. Steele. We always had the cliche, John, defense wins championships. It's very true. First They're going to try to throw it running outside. A little toss outside and up on the tackle was Jason Atkins. The free safety came up and made the stop. Yeah, just uh, Pippen just getting it out to his playmaker and uh, his other key player uh, uh, teammate, Antonio Robinson, trying to isolate him on the outside. Too much traffic, that Garden Valley defense swarming to the football and bringing him down. So third down. They got a long way to go here. We'll see what Coach Mike Crutchfield comes up with. See if he can convert this into a first down. This 
watch that uh, phrase. They're showing fourth down, John. This is fourth and 19. Obviously, they don't punt here. They had their choice before the game, and they informed the officials they will use the automatic punt if they want to. They're going to throw it deep. Oh, it's up in the air. It's a jump ball. And batted down and on the defense. It was Javon Abernathy to free safety. Now we got a little bit of laundry on the field here. And we'll see exactly what they're calling in a minute. I got to believe that's a flag, John. Is that a flag or is that somebody's towel out there? It looks it's yellow. A, I think it's a towel. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a towel out there. Is that there. pink? He says it's pink. I don't believe it's yellow. <laughs> he can't see colors. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, and he's supposed to tell us? Come on now. Yeah, organization doing a great job this month of October, uh, recognizing cancer awareness. Uh, it touches us all in some form, fashion. And uh, we support those who are in that battle. And we contribute where we can to uh, help in the in the battle against cancer. So uh, I really applaud these organizations and the young men for recognizing that. And, uh, so Garden, Garden Valley's gonna start on offense for the first time, John. Quarterback keeper gonna come to the outside here, John. Yep, just found a little bit of room, able to pick up about three, four yards. So not bad for the first play from scrimmage. Uh, they got it right here at the end of the first quarter, under two minutes to go. Collinwood with that long drive that didn't result in any points. It took up almost the whole four, uh, first quarter. But Garden Valley can't be explosive, even though they really haven't shown it during the during the uh, during the playoffs. They do have a talented group of young men, uh, led by Abernathy, Atkins, and Steele. Two-way players, key players. They usually go hand in hand. So second down, we'll call it about eight. I think I smell a pass. Nope, hold on. Going to run it to the outside, and a nice run. He picked up some big yardage. Yeah, good job by Edwards off the right side. Put his foot in the ground, Tim, and really shot up field for an extra five yards right there after his first contact, three yards in, into the run. So makes a very convertible third down here. So Jamal Ellison came up and made the tackle, number 92 from the Collinwood team. He's a seventh grader over at Euclid Middle School. Let's see what Cadell gains. Draws up right here. Right. There it is. The speed of Garden Valley was number eight on the carry, John. Yep. And we got a flag there. I I saw a flag in the in the air. So this is our first call. Well, it's our second penalty of the game. And Ralph, we got to ask you, when you're looking at a, a game like this, young kids, these kind of conditions, they're going to call a personal foul and a face mask. Can you tell us exactly when you're dealing with this kind of group, this kind of weather, is that the norm that that will happen? So the penalty will pick him up some big yardage and put them on the 38 yard line. 23 seconds to go here in the quarter. Yeah, Garden Valley's on the move. What a come up and make a tackle. That's what that's talking about. <laughs> Kamari Pippen Johnson, the league all star. Yeah, Abernathy here, another you know all star, all star right there. The defensive all star did not miss, showing great speed and 
coming up and making this hit right here. We're able to get his get the legs of Abernathy to bring him down for a loss at the end of this first quarter. So no score here at the end of the first quarter, as John mentioned. And folks, we'll be right back with more of the Muni Football 12U Junior Bantam Championship game. Slow down. Slow down and move over. And move over. When you see lights, vests, or reflectors, please give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us, we've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please, slow down. And move over. Need food? We can help. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank's Benefits Outreach Department works within the community to help individuals locate food and apply for SNAP and other public benefits. Weekdays, our Help Center accepts phone calls from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and walk-ins from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 216-738-2067 or stop in our facility at 15500 South Waterloo Road. Our benefits outreach counselors are out in the community every day assisting with benefit enrollment and connecting the community to vital resources. Keep your eye out for our food truck, providing free, fresh produce and SNAP enrollment in the community. For more information, visit www.greaterclevelandfoodbank.org slash get help. Welcome back to Collinwood, where you've been watching the 12U Junior Bantam Championship. And again, it's been the Garden Valley Falcons in the white and silver and the Collinwood Cobras. And when you look at their team rankings throughout the year, and again, Collinwood Cobras definitely put up some good numbers this year as far as the defense and offense. Collinwood was ranked number three in offense with 88 points. Defensively, they only gave up 38. Garden Valley, on the other hand, was number one in offense, and they were number six in defense. So we got two of the top-ranked teams offensively and defensively in the championship game. And I guess, John, when they say that, that's what it's supposed to be, those top teams playing here today. Yep, and uh, it washed out that way this year, Tim, in his first uh, year of this division. Uh, parents, like I said, the players, the coaches are very happy and enjoy it greatly. Oh, get it him. Get him. oh my, here it goes. Down the floor, he's wide open. Oh, oh. oh my lord. Wow. Who said that guy couldn't throw? <laughs> yeah, that was a good job of, of Abernathy showing his athletic ability. Just missing number six, Richard Amy Jr. A nice stiff arm right there. And now he has to gather his feet and try to get up. They gave him a, gave him a chance just beyond his fingertips. Couldn't quite get it. I'll tell you what, he's going to keep that defense honest all day with an arm like that. And the other thing they told us about him was, John, he's a dual threat. You could see he can run and throw. Yep, he's a good athlete, too. He's a good athlete. He's been in Danny's uh, system for a long time, and he's showing his maturity here today, trying to make some plays for the Garden Valley Falcons. He's got a bright future. Third down. Call it 18. He's got some blockers out front. And we have them staying there. He stepped out of bounds, I got to believe. So I saw the official stop the clock. So he had to run out of bounds. So it's fourth down. And we're going to call it about nine. Long standing tradition for Garden Valley Falcons. And Danny Solomon, number two. Whoever wears number two is a very special player in their eyes. Good student, good person. 
and, and a great athlete. And when uh, Danny Salomon says you're a great athlete, believe me, you can believe him. He's coached some of the best. Snap. Here he goes, roll to the right. He's gonna keep it. He's to the outside, he picks up a block. Oh my! Again, another big game. I don't think he picked up enough for the first down, though. Yep, they're moving the sticks, Tim. Just a good job right here by Abernathy, keeping that threat, keep holding the ball up high. Keeping that threat of throwing the football to slow the defender down. And he's so quick and agile, he's able to pull it down and get around him and pick up enough for that first down. So a big play for the Garden Valley Falcons right there by the all-star and key player, quarterback Javante Abernathy. So the Cobra cheerleaders keeping warm, doing their routine. Good job by the Chile programs this year. The ladies had a lot of fun and we enjoyed some good weather for the most part. Hope the football guys stick with us for today to get us through these championship games. Here he is again. Number two. Makes the man miss him. Look at him pick up those yards. So, John, let me, let me let's talk a little bit about their offense for a minute. We've seen him be able to throw the long pass, didn't connect. Mm -hmm. We've seen his ability to run. Now, when you're defending that, I don't know how you handle both. And what would you, what would be your priority with him? Well, you have to stay home. You have to stay home. String him out. Make sure the defensive ends, the uh, the, uh, the tackles stay home. String him out. Don't let him get downfield. Make him throw the football. That's what you really want him to do. You want to make him throw the football. The defensive back stay with their man. Stay with their man. The guy they're covering, the sign to cover, and make it just difficult for him. You just can't let him run wild out there because you all you do is miss a tackle and it could be a touchdown. A little jet sweep right here. Robert Gaines, Christian Robert Gaines on the on the run, little jet sweep to the right side. So at one point, you got to put your foot in the ground and get upfield. He does that, stumbles forward for a couple, and they're looking at third down, third and a couple, a long two. Second quarter action. Just under five minutes to go. No score. First red zone appearance by either team today. It's definitely Cleveland weather. Oh, the big fella wasn't fooled that time. Wow. That's like the, the big fridge in there making that tap. Oh, man. These guys have been showing up all year. I'll tell you what, he's going to be a heck of a player, man. Yep. You're looking at number 99. Christopher Lucius. Good job by Lucius there, reactor. He he, he's got to get Abernathy down. He told me this eighth grader out of Kenneth Clement. When you see him, he's one of the biggest guys on the field, but he can move and he can tackle. We'll get a chance to see him in the All-Star game. So fourth down and four. Oh, back the other way, but oh, great play. It's a big good stop, job. big stop. Excellent job by the defensive tackle right there to get him to change directions. And right there, number 16 is waiting for him for the Cobras to bring him down. That Kobe Chester Leon, right outside linebacker, came in also to help on the tackle. They are their league all star. Good job there by Jaden Jaden Willis. And that will put us at 346, and it'll be a change of possession. 
So they've taken a time out here. Maybe we can get into a huddle and hear them. We score right here, we get the ball again at halftime. Let's score. Let's go. <laughs> Cobras finished first in this 12U division, 5-1. Garden Valley fought their way to the championship game with a regular season record of 3-3. Three and three. Got hot at the end of the season and able to make this appearance in this <laughs> inaugural game for us here in Cleveland Muni football, like Tim mentioned. Collinwood, very good defensive team with Garden Valley ranking at the bottom of the list. In the 12 view. Tough run. A lot of moves, but not a lot of progress. So you had two excellent defenses today. Antonio Robinson again on the tackle. Correction. At number two was Zayshawn Atkins league director or the league all-star from Garden Valley. Mm -hmm. See a picture there of Kamari Pippen trying to do everything they can to get him to football in different ways. Tom. Good tackle. Boy, a, lot of strength, a lot of hand strength on that tackle. Wow. He was holding on for dear life able to pull him down. Third down. So the Cobras came ready to play. Yes, they did. Didn't expect anything less these two organizations. They've been here before. As Jason mentioned, they were in the Pee Wee Championship before. Little misdirection, but it's, it's not going to work. It's a good job. Good job by the Garden Valley Falcons defense. Amir Harris, he's wound up. John, I can hear it. Can you hear that sound, John? I can hear it now in the locker rooms, both of them. We got a block. We got a block. You understand? We got a block and sustain the block. Stay with your man. <laughs> Stay with your man till he hit a whistle blow. So yes. they'll, they'll call a timeout. And obviously, when uh, the football season is now starting to come to an end, we got two great things that are taking place. First of all, when you're talking about co ed volleyball, it's going to be all ages from 8 to 11, 12 to 14, 15 to 18. If you're an 18-year-old and you're in school, you're eligible to play. Again, uniforms are provided, transportation. You can contact your local recreation center. If you're not sure and you have questions, pick up the phone right now and call 664-3535. The other thing is we want to make sure that you know that obviously Halloween is nothing but a few days away. And again, big city boo. Yeah, they're going to have the parties inside. It will be safety precautions. You wear the mask, you'll come in. They got candy and a giveaway. It's on Friday, October 29th at all recreation centers. Again, big city boo, if you remember it from two years ago. It is back, and we will be giving out a lot of candy, and they'll have a lot of fun. So please contact your local recreation center. Wow, that sounds like fun. I think I'm going to have I'm going to ask Ralph if he can go to one of those and dress up as a referee. <laughs> I think he'd be good at that. What do you think, partner? Do you think, think he'd be good with that? I think he could pull it off. Yeah. What I do think. you think, Ralph? I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> well, see this guy over here winding the clock. Bruce Hill. He's looking at the guy running the clock. Got it underway. 155 to go. And John, at halftime, we'll be able to talk to both head coaches and, and get their views. Yes, we will. We will talk to uh, Coach uh, Mike Crutchfield of the Cobras and 
with coach, talk to Coach Danny Solomon. Uh, just a, a total contrast in these two programs. Uh, Col Collinwood Cobras, only three years old, fourth season in Muni. Um, because of the pandemic, we didn't play last year, but making a huge impression in, the, in just a young, a young player. Oh, look at the jitterbug. Yes, look at that jitterbug go. Oh. <laughs> Richard Amy came up and made the tackle, but he had a day out there. Look at this, folks. John, look at this move. Yeah, he's got good awareness, Tim. You can tell he has a, 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 a good football IQ because he's a player. And for that, for a kid that small to be that effective, uh, he's been playing a lot of football so far at 12U. Kind of gives you that Kareem Hunt type look. A little bit of a move. I like it. I like it. So what do we have here, Mr. Referee? I love that when they go false start, but what exactly is he calling here? That false start means that somebody on the line of scrimmage moved before the snap of the ball, and when that happens, it kills the play. And at this age, you're going to see that. Well, surprisingly, today you haven't seen it a lot, but at this age, it usually happens a lot. Do you guys get criticized on these kind of plays where you can tell me, I know you do a lot of high school games, Ralph, do they give them the number or most of the time they don't? We would like them to give the number so that would help the coaches actually correct a mistake once they get to the sideline or in the, in the at halftime. But yes, they don't get it a lot. All right, first down, 15, 45 seconds to go. Oh, don't try to pass it again. He's looking, he's got a man wide open, Tim. He had a man wide open right there, number 25, Tavell Steele Jr. And he stepped out of bounds, and he's at the 18-yard line, John. It's a good job here by Abernathy, just showing poise, Tim, and patience. Uh, not quite attacking the line of scrimmage, threatening the run, but kind of waiting for his man to come open, and a good job of, of Steele throttling down to give himself a big, big space to catch the football. That's a, that's what you call a, that's what you call teamwork and chemistry. Get back down the red zone again. They came up with nothing the first time. We'll see what they do here. To the outside. Oh. Like nowhere to go there. Got to put that foot in the ground and explode up field. Uh, be a little bit more physical. Guys got to keep working. Coach Danny Solomon is letting them have it, too. He wants to hear some pads cracking. They don't want any pushing. So he stepped out, 22 seconds to go. It'll be second down. And it looks about 11. And Danny wants to, he wants to punch this ball in there. It's the second time down here in the red zone. Last time they came away with nothing. This time he wants to really be physical and push this ball into the end zone. There it is right there, straight downhill. Just like he likes it. We've stopped the clock. With 14 seconds to go. Now they only get four per game, so he's banking on it. We, hey, we're down here with our best shot. Let's see it up. Let's get the timeouts. Let's see what we can do with it. Yeah, they both know how valuable and how precious it is to be in the red zone. All it takes is one score to win games like this. So my partner and office offensive guru, what are you going to try to run here on this play? I like the downhill. I like the downhill motion with number two running the football. Just come straight off the football. Uh, less chance of turnovers. Uh, give the ball right to the running back. Hold on to it tight. Blow them blow out down the field. Just be physical, mano on mano. Uh, the key is there's only 14 seconds left, though. So they'd have to either call two plays, get back up and run the football again, or spike it. 
or run to the outside and hopefully get to the uh, sideline so you can preserve your timeouts and stop the clock. So in this division, this age, I would try it for the outside. I, I would attack the sideline, try to get it open, and try to get a crease for uh, for number two. But they got him flanked out, Tim, wide to the right, right here. So it looks like they're going to try a pass to Atkins. Am I looking at that wrong? Let's see, got number, no, it's number six. He's on the weak side. Run a slant. A lot of run pressure. The run, gonna, all the way around. Behind. Wow. And we got a face mask. That's what I'm hearing up here. Seven seconds left. That was an interesting. Oh, play. man. You're going to stop the clock. You got the face mask on top of it. This is one time between Robinson and Leon. Right there. They put the pressure down. on. Yeah, that's a personal hurt. foul. That's a personal foul face mask. Tim, he grabs it and he pulls it straight down. Yeah. That's uh, that could cause serious injury, and that's that's a big one. So they'll they'll roll it up there, and obviously everyone that's watching this, Mr. King, does this carry the automatic first down? No, it does not. This goes back to the high school rule, which says you have a face a face mask. If you get the yards to gain, you will have the first down. Other than that, it's a repeat. And once you're inside the 30, you have to go half the distance. And again, this coach, he's inside the 20. I don't know how that happened. There's a box there. I know you got to take a shot at the end zone right here on this play. That was an interesting play call on that last play, Tim. We got the face mask. The quarterback rolled out to the right, but the two guys, the two receivers on the right side ran across the field, almost like uh, Kansas City does with Tariq Hill and the uh, other receivers uh, with the Chiefs. Ran them across field, let Mahomes throw away across field. He's got that kind of arm talent, but I don't know if Abernathy has that kind of arm talent, and he didn't have time to throw, so a couple missed assignments up front as far as blocking. Oh, we, got we got another flag. That's to the Collinwood Cobras. Got to stay within the restricted areas. So, Ralph, explain the sideline warning call. Well, first of all, you had three coaches outside of the box. That's the first thing. And then you only can have the head coach speaking at that time. And you had three, four coaches talking. So, yes, I would give them a sideline warning. Good call. Open the throw. Nobody. Outside. Can he get in? No. Four seconds. He's got four. Give him credit. He was thinking, John, I got still one more shot. He had nobody over there with him, though, Tim. He's scrambling to the left. And you see it. There's nobody in the end zone. There's no help coming that way to scramble. There's all Cobras over there on defense. And you don't want big Lucius on you. You don't want him to get a hold of you. So he, he, he ran straight for the sidelines. Good so job, Lucius. First and goal on the five, but more importantly, four seconds to go. Okay, Mr. Guru, are we going to still run the ball here? Are we going to try a quick pass, same time? Quick, what do we got? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line up on the hash, line up tight, and I'm just going to throw a quick out. He's giving him the goal line right there. Just turn around, throw he it. right up the middle. Oh, oh, the little guy. Not quite. I uh, didn't get it. Didn't get it. Good job by Collinwood. Oh, my. Knocked on the door right there to the end. Nobody's home. But the Cobras come away with the moral victory as they're able to hold them. And, John, when you talk about the first half, obviously it's been defense, defense, and defense. Yeah, it has, Tim. The offensive side of the ball on both teams has just not been able to shake the rust off and complete the plays. We've had, we've had some frasses of brilliance. Guys have made some plays, but not to the end zone. So here we are, 0-0 in the first half. We'll be grabbing the head coach here. Right here, as soon as we can get him lined up for the talk to the coach so we can get to him to his team, and then we'll talk to the other coach as well. Well, first of all, Coach, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Well, wow, what a what a uh, first half. You, you talk about defense and your kids taking a stand there at the end. You got to feel pretty good about that. 
Uh, and again, our guest is Mike Crutchfield, the head coach of the Collinwood Cobras. He's a 1996 graduate of John Marshall. And uh, you did some playing in the football and the track and the basketball in your high school career. Mm -hmm. But obviously, a day like today, the cold weather, you know, wet field, how has it impacted you as far as your offense? Well, you know, uh, I like the elements. And uh, we were pre prepared for this because I looked at the forecast and I knew it would be a football uh, day. And uh, we battled them, I think, week three. And we came out with a 7-6 victory, so I knew it would be tight. And obviously, Coach, your team comes in highly ranked with the defense. But obviously on offense, what are you going to try to do to get some offense going here in the second half? Well, we got we to gotta just stick to uh, the script we came in with. Uh, we got to run and we got to stop the run. I feel like if we do that, we'll be OK. And obviously, uh, you've seen the Garden Valley now for a half. Um, obviously, the quarterback's got the big arm. He's been able to throw as well as run. Obviously, uh, staying home is going to play a big role here, I suppose, in the second half of your team. That's correct, man. But being, being but don't break, you know. I, I, I knew they were going to come in and they were going to pass. But uh, like I said, being but don't break. We play, we play our uh, defense, solid game. We, we'll come out with a victory. Well, first of all, we want to thank you for stopping by. We're going to let you get back to your team, and good luck in the second half. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Mike Crutchfield with us here at the half. And again, uh, he'll be going back to his team, and we'll be talking to the head coach of Garden Valley before we start the half, Danny Solomon, right after that. But, John, there's a special story that is part of the 2021 season. And we come here with a, with a heavy heart. In my mind, the man that really put this together a long, long time ago, he's the man that has not only impacted the youth football, but sports forever. And we lost him through the pandemic. And again, the former league director, Joe Wise, again, had uh, passed away during the pandemic, but truly was an amazing person as far as what he did to build this program. And he was kind of like a mentor to Joe and I all the way through it. What a solid man. And, and let's talk a little bit about what you knew about Joe Wise. Well, Joe, to me, just epitomized uh, class and grace, toughness and love. He was uh, my first football coach I ever had in life. And uh, when my dad took me up to Woodhill Park to join Pal six, I'll never forget that day. He and uh, Coach Wise, they clicked right away, Tim. Uh, talked for uh, minutes and minutes and minutes until Joe had to get with the team and, and start practice. And my dad visited practice often just to see how I was doing and to talk to, to Coach Wise. Uh, just to, as a pillar of, of Cleveland Muni football, uh, he directed us all the way up until uh, you know, he was called home to be with our father in heaven. And uh, he's sorely missed already, and he will be missed. But we carry on his tradition every day by providing his services and these opportunities for these young men and these young ladies through our football organization. You know, I'm convinced that Joe might have had a little conversation with our Lord saying, hey, let's let's hold off the ring, let these kids play. And, <laughs> and I truly believe that uh, his icon, his legacy will never be forgotten. No. You know, because he was one of a kind. And uh, I can tell you, folks at home, when, you, when you're looking about Joe Wise and you talk about this man, it's not only that he always went above and beyond. Whether, whether in our basketball program years ago when he first started for the older kids, he made sure that they found funding for all the kids to make their own shoes, their own bags. He went above and beyond. In Muni football, the program grew, and he ended up bringing in divisions like we're now bringing in three more. But back then, it was him and Harry Little that came by and added the termite division, and little kids got to play. That's true. And I mean, and Joe was the type of guy that you never, ever, ever saw him get upset. You never saw a person say a bad word about the man. And even when he talks about how he played uh, basketball for the, the great uh, coach over at Cleveland State. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can honestly tell you folks, he is sorely missed. His legacy will live on through the Muni Football League for years. 
And uh, if I ever had a father and I wanted someone to be my father, it was always somebody like a Joe Wise. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, that, that, that Joe was, uh, he was a, he was a gentle giant. Uh, when he spoke, it was, uh, people listened. People listened. And he had a very uh, uncanny way, like you were saying, Tim, about how he could, he could take a look at a community and see what they needed through the game of sports and bring along with it education and enrichment and nourishment uh, to the mind, bodies, and souls of the participants in the, in the league. Uh, he had a huge impact on me as far as uh, my football career. Uh, number one, I, didn't ever, I never wanted to let him down. Never wanted to come home and give him bad news about what I was doing or, and how I was doing. Uh, I was a family man because of him. Uh, I tried to be the best father because of him. And uh, like I said, he and my dad they had the same qualities and the same uh, goals for me and my brothers and sisters. And uh, we just enjoyed him being in our lives. And when Joe became the director and he asked me to, uh, uh, Joe Record became the director and he asked me to come along with him. I had three sons in high school at the time. Uh, at least two of them was in high school and was spending a lot of time with him. But, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not turn down the heat of the calling to help our community and keep building this football program. Uh, to what it is today. And uh, Joe be sorely missed, but never forgotten. And we're always walking in shoes to make sure that the league keeps elevating to the proper level to provide the service for our young men and our young women to uh, have a, a great, prosperous future. Well, we're going to we're going to go down to the field here and talk to the head coach of the Garden Valley Falcons. Danny Solomon is going to be joining us. And first of all, Danny, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Obviously, firsthand uh, defense, offense so close, outstanding, just near, near miss plays has really kind of been the story of the first half. What is it you told your kids here at halftime? Uh, what we told them is we did a great job. I, I like the energy and effort they gave in the first half. Uh, it would have been nice to punch that one in to end the first half, but we're in good shape. We get the ball coming out second half. I really like the energy, and I think we'll uh, be successful on this drive coming out for the second half. And obviously, when you, you talk about a day today, the chilly weather, the wet conditions, the wind, I mean, it all plays a role for both teams, but obviously I know you've had to prepare the kids for this day. Hey, this is playoff weather in Cleveland, Ohio. I couldn't ask for a better better weather day. Um, hey, this is, this is uh, how the weather is in championship playoff time. So, yeah, we are definitely prepared for this. And I, for, quite frankly, I've been waiting for a day like this. And Danny Solomon is a 1993 graduate of Aviation High School. He's been part of this organization for the very beginning. And, folks, if you're interested in getting your kids to play for a guy in Muni football, this is one man that starts with great values and teaching discipline. And he's probably one of the toughest areas of the city over at Garden Valley. Danny, you do a great job with those kids. And really, you're a great role model. We want to thank you for what you do. Thanks a lot, Tim. Yeah, I, appreciate you, those kind, I appreciate Bye. those kinds of work. Thanks, guys. Yep. Okay, we'll see him more in the second half. When we come back, we'll have to start of the second half championship between the junior Bantam championship between the Garden Valley Falcons and the Collinwood Cobras. Until all our daughters are safe. Until all our children have families. Until all our families have homes. Until all our parents are cared for. We'll be here. Need food? We can help. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank's Benefits Outreach Department works within the community to help individuals locate food and apply for SNAP and other public benefits. Weekdays, our Help Center accepts phone calls from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and walk-ins from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 216-738-2067 or stop in our facility at 15500 South Waterloo Road. 
Our benefits outreach counselors are out in the community every day assisting with benefit enrollment and connecting the community to vital resources. Keep your eye out for our food truck, providing free, fresh produce and SNAP enrollment in the community. For more information, visit www.greaterclevelandfoodbank.org slash get help. Welcome back to Collinwood Field where we're at the second half of a scoreless game between the Garden Valley Falcons who are in white and the Collinwood Cobras in blue. And John, when you look at the halftime stats, it kind of indicates all kind of defense. Yeah, pretty balanced uh, on number of plays, 15 and 12 for Garden Valley and Collinwood. Uh, total yards, Collinwood has 20 and uh, Garden Valley has 60, 61, mostly on the ground. A few sacks there for Garden Valley, but at the same time, Collinwood's defense has been stepping up to the plate as well, shutting them down, shutting down the Falcons. So we're going to see an exciting second half here in this inaugural 12U game. And the sun has come out. So, so that's a blessing. Football guys are blessing us, yeah. And we also want to let you know at home, we want you to be part of today's telecast as we'll be selecting an outstanding player on offense and defense. And the, the ones that are picking it, I'm going to give you their name and phone number. So if they don't get it right, you can call them and give them all kind of hell. I'm just saying that as a joke now. Don't do that. But Sebastian Jenkins and Eric Brown are in the house. They're keeping our stats for us, as well as Eric Dunn. There we go. We got a little audio now. So here we go. Again, he's titled, bottled up on that one end. I'll tell you, you got to come up and you got to hit him low, John. If you don't hit him low, he's going to kill you every time. Absolutely. Sounds real good here. So we got third down. We're going to call it about five. John, how are you doing with your, are you good now, John? Let's see if you're good on your end. I'm halfway there. We're oh, I got there. you now, baby. Okay. You're now, in the house. I just need to, I don't know. No, don't Press touch them down. buttons. Don't no, touch no. those buttons. He touched that one button all the way to the left there. Oh. Yeah, that was the one he touched there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, he's getting speed, to the outside. Speed, speed, speed. He took it all the way to the 49 yard line and a first down. Good pursuit there by Tony Robinson. Good, good, good job by Tony Robinson on the pursuit. But this guy right here is pretty quick. This Atkins is special again. Number two is always special in Danny Solomon's program. And as you can see, Deshaun right there. So we got Spot safety. Action, Atkins loves to play video games. His favorite player is, is the Browns' Nick Chubb, who's hurt this week and won't be playing against the Arizona Cardinals, but we sure hope they win the game. First down and 10 oh, to the this, outside. This stiff arm. Another one. And throws it. And caught. Wow. What poise, Tim. That happened I'll tell you, is special. a 12-year-old folks is doing this. <laughs> Stiffs are two people. Look at it. this. This uh, it's taking his time here. First down. Just taking his time, just picking his way. Couple stiff arms. Tosses it to the open receiver. Right there for the first down. Garden Valley on the march again. So first and ten. They're at the 35-yard line. And Garden Valley showed a little bit of a little bit of offense there at the end of the first half. But as the coach told us at halftime, they didn't punch it in, but he felt confident coming into this one that we would be okay. Oh, good job. Well, 
and make the stop. Now that's, when you talk about tackling and you're, you're going down and you're, you're making the tackle the proper way, that's what's gonna happen. You know, you start going up high, they're gonna be knocking you down. That's why they're running backs, so they can break a tackle. And it was Lucius, number 99. Yeah, Lucius got a hold of Justin Chambers and snatched it down real quick. Second down, we'll call it nine. So third down, we'll call it about four. You cannot hear John. Oh. Can you hear him now? Check, check, check. They're hearing you now. John. He's got to move a little bit closer. They pick up the first down. Check, check. We're good, John. We're good in the house all now. Right, all right, all right, all right. 25 yard line, first and 10, 304 to go. Garden Valley on a drive. Yeah, they're trying to get back in the red zone, Tim, for the third time today. Twice they made it down to the red zone in the first half, wasn't able to come up with any points. Five yards away right here. To the outside, he gets a good block. Uh -oh, uh -oh, he picks it, he's gonna be taking it all the way down. And they're gonna mark him out at the eight yard line. It's first down and goal. Yeah, I think the offensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator of the Falcons and Abernathy are starting to get clicking here on the same page. They're tying a good block right there on the end to spring Abernathy upfield for another seven, eight yards. And a first down. Two thirty-five. Third quarter. You're looking at Collinwood Athletic Field Muni Football Championship game. Ah. There you go. They got him. There you're talking about. Get him down low, and then here comes the help. Making the tackle. And it looks like it's getting up kind of slow too. Rondell Dungey is the one that came up and make the call and on the tackle, and then everybody else helped out. Doss came in. Also assisted on the play, number 50, Jacob Doss. Good clean game. Yeah, good job right there by Dungey to hold on to the Calvary showed up. You know, we know somebody's gonna sleep good tonight. Abernathy, he's been running around all game long, trying to make plays for this Garden Valley uh, Falcons uh, offense. So 2.11 to go here. No score, second down 14 in goal. This is goal now, they need to score. Cobras have been very tough in the red zone. He called it, our defense will bend, but will not break. We'll Abernathy see right here. Goes in motion. Uh-oh, got a little fancy. That time Abernathy went in, went in motion and they, qu they quick snapped the ball to number two, Tim, trying to get Atkins involved somehow. 
probably with a good student body to the left, to the wide side of the field to try to get in the end zone. That's where that's where you hear that that little sound on the far sideline, like, ouch, don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> Always want to sustain them. And you don't want to be the one that kills your own drives. Exactly. And the, and the kids, the offensive players were excited about the play because when the flag was blown, the whistle, when the flag was thrown, the whistle was blown. They were upset jumping up and down because they knew they had a good play for that defense. Second down, 19 and goal. Good view of the interior lineman. You got to think they're going to try to throw it. He's rolling out right. He's oh, open. he's got a whole place to go. Yeah, man, wide open. And he, he's going to sneak down inside the 10 yard line. Man, that bootleg, they had everybody going the other way. He had a man wide open in the end zone. Couldn't, could, didn't see him or couldn't quite gather his feet because of the pursuit to get the ball to him. Cobras did not stay home on that side, John, and that's what gave him the big play. Exactly. 41 seconds, it's third and goal. Third and goal from the nine yard line. We want you to know that the final decision on the selection of the players will be blessed by Jason Dunn but also his right-hand man that can do it all. Mr. Anthony Martin is in the house. Want to keep him on his toes over there. They keep attacking that right side, Tim. This time they go with Atkins and he fumbled the football. They it turned like it over. Down. Oh no. I haven't seen the signal yet. There it is. Uh -oh, the Collinwood Cobra. We will bend, but we won't break. And Atkins is not feeling too good about giving up that football. I thought he was down myself. But you see here, Abernathy gives him the ball again, attacking that right side. He gets upfield, and it looks like, nope, the ball did come out because he landed on the defender. And somehow he was able to get it out there. See right here in slow motion, see if we got a better view. He's struggling, pushing. The, up. the ball comes out. He's not down until good. No call by the referee. And the Cobras live to fight another red zone, uh, red zone assault by the Garden Valley Falcons. And folks, we want to remind you that we also will be having a be back here at Collinwood Field next week, where John and Jason Dunn will be in the house, and they'll be talking about a 10U championship game. And again, two outstanding teams. So we'll come right back after this timeout. We are back at Collinwood Field. 11 seconds to go here in the third quarter. A big turnover by the Collinwood Cobras. And it's first down and 10 on the nine yard line. John Good and Tim Wells in the house. Big fella with the ball. Man. Yeah, you need plenty of help for that guy. Now I, just, I just want you to know, coach, I'm going to go back a little ways, but if you remember, they used to do this in 1985 with the Chicago Bears, with the guy whose name was Fridge, right? That's right. That's William right. Perry mm -hmm. put him back there, and they'd make him run. Man. I remember those days. Uh, I've had a couple battles against the Fridge. A very good player on offense. He was effective. Uh, thank goodness for him. He only had a, a yard or two to go to get to the end zone and get a first down. So. Mike Dicker knew how to use him, and they were effective with him. 
Well, I don't I don't want to put the whammy on us, <laughs> but I'm starting to smell that word called overtime. Uh oh, you know, and it could be a big play that could break that little word. <laughs> but right now, these two teams defensively, I understand how they can have shutouts. Those defenses can move, they can swarm, they can tackle. Yeah, they're not afraid to come up and hit you. But I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb, Tim. I think we have too much talent on both sides of the football. Between Abernathy, Atkins, Pippen Johnson, Robinson, Chester Leon, that they can get the ball to the end zone. And don't forget about my man Steele Jr. That's true. And on the other side, I'll tell you what, when you look, you look at Garden Valley, man, that quarterback and their running ability outside, they're scary. Yeah, Abernathy, uh, I got a chance to take a first look at him, Tim, doing uh, flag football. And he was impressive then, just whipping the ball around the field. I like the way that uh, he led his team in flag football and the accuracy of his throws, his footwork. Uh, Coach Solomon doing a real good job down there developing him. And now at 12 you and a couple more years possibly left to play on this uh, in this league. Uh, he's got a very, very, a very bright future at the quarterback position. And John, you touched on something we haven't talked about all day, but also Muni football not only on the tackle side in the fall, but in the spring they put a flag football program together. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about that when we get a chance. Yes, we will. And, yes, we and will. When you mention flag to Jason Dunn, you get a huge smile from him. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he's doing a hell of a job with the program and the teams. We doubled the teams, Tim, from from uh, 2019 to 2021. We're just glad that we were able to get the season. Oh, up. I heard. Oh man, did he get? Him. Did you feel that up here? Yeah, that was a good job by uh, by Steele. Uh, Steele is a good-looking player. To Bell, to Bell Steele. John, in your days when you played for the Eagles, you know, and the man Buddy Ryan on defense, did you ever feel sore the next day? <laughs> yes, very, <laughs> very sore. That that hit right there, I'd feel sore <laughs> in about 30 seconds here. After every practice, I felt sore going against guys <laughs> like Reggie White and Seth Joyner. Oh my lord, Clyde Simmons. Well, but he was, all, was a defensive guy. He didn't care much about offense. Third down and nine. To the outside, off tackle. Pickup of a few. Another good tough play. Now it's a tough decision. You got fourth down. You're inside the 20. Do they use the automatic punt? Or are they going to go for it? You got you got you got you got to automatically punt this football. You cannot give you them the full believe position. that. Yeah, there it there is. is. Okay. Uh, and the automatic punt rule, John. Let's talk about that. Automatic punt rule. It's when the coach decides to basically punt the football. They move it up about 20 yards. They take 15 seconds off the clock. Yep. So hopefully our clock operator knows to get the 15 seconds off the clock. And um, and how this decision is made at this level is they make the decision before the game. The coaches tell the officials exactly. either I'm going to punt or I'm going to use the automatic punt rule. And right. in a day like today, <laughs> if they wanted to punt, somebody needs to check with them because something ain't right here. Yeah, today is definitely you want to opt for the automatic punt. And be ready to prepare yourself to be able to play offense or defense. <clears throat> right now, that puts the ball back uh, to the 38 yard line, but still in uh, Cobra territory. Folks, we're not we're not exaggerating, but the skies are blue. It looks like a beautiful football day in Cleveland, Ohio, at the Collinwood Athletic Complex. Well, the prediction was at least 90% rain today, but we'll take it. And we're going to we're going to hope that next week when Jason Dunn and John Good are doing the 10 year, we get the same kind of weather. That would be awesome. It would be. So here we go. 
First down and 10. They're at their 32 yard line. They're 32 yards from putting a score in. In Garden Valley, if they don't shoot themselves in the foot here, you can see this might be a good territory to make the big play. No mistakes, just execute. Play one. Oh, great, Stefan. Throw it away. Good job. Smart play. Now, I don't know if we're going to catch this on replay. But the right tackle not only missed the block. Now watch this. He'll push him. See him right there? Mm -hmm. He pushes the guy to his quarterback. Now that might have been a wide receiver out there. Yeah, I think it was a skilled oh, player. Oh, my Lord. But just being a great athlete and being as poised as he is, having an athlete, just took his time, stiff on him, and then threw the football away, which shows that he's, he's thinking out there. Now we've seen, we do see a lot of that also at all levels where a lineman might get beaten. You see him push a guy away from the quarterback, but not mm -hmm. into the quarterback. <laughs> and he may not even realize that he rolled out already. Yeah, I was gonna say Abernathy is a guy that you don't quite know where he is, but you want to stay between him, your man, and the, and, and the quarterback. Tough play right there by the defensive end on, on the left side, right there. Vic Lucius, once again. We've been calling his name all day long. Oh, Christopher Lucius, again, from Kenneth Clement, eighth grader. Loves video games, and his favorite players is, is Miles Garrett from the Cleveland Browns. Not a bad choice at all. I'm looking down here to Tim at this list of uh, hobbies and career ambitions. We got, we're going to have some great video games in the future because all these guys love video games. You better believe it. We got an engineer in there. Yeah, we got an engineer in there, a video game engineer. And a lot of NFL players. Yep. Oh! And he's got some room. Could be. And he's got the first down. And a little bit more. And a lot more. And all of it. He, oh, he just barely. All the way down. No flags. They're at the one, John. No flags. There's that big play we were talking about. And you look at it here, John. Yeah, good job, Abernathy. Again, calm, cool, collected. Started off to the right. Got whirlwind around and went the opposite way and saw nothing but green pastures. Poor job of tackling right there. A missed tackle right there. Abernathy, another stiff arm. Great job right there by number five, I believe it is, to bring him down. You see a picture of Abernathy. I believe that was uh, number six. Might have been Pippen Johnson. Here we go, right through the middle. And they pushed their way in there. Did they get there? I didn't uh, see no hands go up yet. Now by Lucius and company. I like my chances with Abernathy on the outside. I fake a dive up inside and just make Abernathy just a race to the corner, Tim, to the wide side of the field. You got to get in the end zone right here. This is it. This is the game. So second down and goal. About four minutes left to go. Four twenty-one. Four and counting. Well, you got to, the defenses can't let them have the one in the middle. They got to play tough there. So you're right, John. I think going to the outside. Now, they called a timeout here. This is a good timeout for them to establish what they're going to do. Right. Oh, oh the officials the called time. Are you helping them out, huh? Was he checking this? Or, this is one of those. Uh, well, okay. No, nope, just want to make water. sure he's okay. Water. water out there on the official timeout. He's still trying to give him water. <laughs> no, you can't give him water, little man. Come on out. Okay. Second down. Let's call it inches. Got to leave the ball in Abernathy's hand. There he is. Keep going outside. That, that's it. There he's it in. Is. Touchdown. 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 Touchd
All right, all right. Now they gotta hold their poise. Gotta hold your poise. So the eighth grader from Casa Elementary School, not only league all-star key player, favorite team, the Bills, and he likes DK Metcalf. Not a bad guy to, to like. And I'm sure the coaches, when they look back, they'll talk about the missed tackles and that staying home. Yes. You know, that, that hurt on that play. But that's usually one of the strengths of the Collinwood Cobras. It sure is. Oh, Atkins couldn't quite get in there. Too much standing around on that offensive line. So that's huge. It is huge. Because now a score by the Cobras and a try for the extra point gives them the game. So Garden Valley's defense has got to come up and play. Antonio Robinson denied him getting in. The left outside linebacker and league all-star. So 3.34 to go. The Garden Valley Falcons, you see it right there. They're up 6-0. This is exciting, Tim. First inaugural game of our in our league at the 12U uh, Division Championship, uh, a, a division that's been enjoyed by all all season long. Great play. Uh, we had, I believe, we had about eight teams in this division, Tim. Three thirty-four. And the teams played hard. They played well. And the kids had a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, we had eight teams in this division: Collinwood Cobras, the Glenville Panthers. The Ohio Cardinals, Westside Wolverines, Southside Seahawks, Garden Valley Falcons playing here today, and Pack Youth Bearcats, and the Youngstown uh, Redmen. So we got first down and 10. Uh oh, he's got a convoy, Tim. He's got a convoy. Whoa, somebody's making a statement here. All right, they're in, they're in the Garden Not Valley. Not just tour. yet. Don't count us out, they're saying. We got a man down. Looks like his number 11. That's down. Take a knee, take a knee. Well, Keon Taylor is the one that is down. He's the one that made the stop. And it does pick up the first down. And you can see that sense of urgency now that that the uh, Collinwood Corpus has, now that the Garden Valley Falcons finally punched it, punched it in, Coach. Crutchfield is really, really urging his guys on to uh, get the ball into the end zone, especially right now. Do it early. Don't wait. You know, this is twice now in the ball game. The last time it was Garden Valley's advantage where we had that little delay with the injury and it gave him another shot to get in. This time, Garden <laughs> Valley got the injury and you can see the Cobras are huddling up over here. And again, um, if Ralph was here, I would be asking him on the officials' timeout. You know, are they permitted to do that? I believe they are not, but they weren't. Nobody was looking, so. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? Do we always use with the? Rip? I didn't see it. That's it. That's the famous line. <laughs> you can just see the anxiousness of the Collinwood Cobras. They know this is dire straits right now. They're trying to get their first championship and their young, their young uh, career here in Muni football might be one of the fastest organizations to get uh, a championship in just their third season, fourth season of, of their existence. We need to talk about a will to run. You're looking at it right there and making that tackle was number two, Zayshan. And Jaheem Edwards, number 20, also on the stop. Yeah, good job by Antonio Robinson right here. Just getting, putting the head down and getting upfield at all means necessary. He even stiff arm his own man out the way. 240 clock runs. Halloween Cobra's looking for the big play. They get a double block. Cleared the way. To the outside. Speed, John, speed. Yep, yep. That's what that is. Yep. All the way down to the 22-yard line. 
And a first down for the Cowan Cobras. They're finding something on that right side where they can run outside. It's something that Coach Crutchfield's had in his arsenal the whole day, Tim. He's just now pulling it out, uh, just giving the ball to his, one of his main men, his key players, Antonio Robinson, just on the keeper, making sure the ball is secure and just giving it upfield and running to the outside. He'll give it to the big fella just for a change of pace. He's got to hold on to that ball. No turnovers. And he's able to pick up five. 2.14 clock runs, John. That, that play was to give them some room on the right side. I'm telling you right now, they ran left to spread them out. And to give Robinson a break because he's going to run the football right here. Believe that. Okay, we got a timeout. Collinwood. Timeout, Collinwood. I think it was a good timeout call here. You got it. You're now in scoring position with 150 to go. They got to make something happen here. Well, they, they're definitely playing with a lot more confidence, Tim. You can see their swag on this drive as Antonio Robinson able to pick up a couple plays. Big plays. Let's go in the huddle and see what the coach has to say. Guys, y'all know I love y'all, right? Let's go. Let's go. Ends on right now. We got KP. Listen, we got Tonyo to the right. Tonyo better score. And y'all better block. Let's go. Let's go. Direct snap. Direct snap. Okay. Ryan Bell on the ball. Direct snap. It's a little bit of coach talk there. We'll have a talk about that one later. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. After that timeout. Isn't that your area of the league, John, that you handle? Yeah. Noted. Duly noted. Duly noted. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> okay, 150 to go. We got Antonio Robinson. There he goes. He's finding the opening. His own guy put the stop right there. They knew it was coming. Number two, Antonio Robinson. 140 clock runs. And you got a clock stop here. We'll take a look at it here, Jen. Yeah, good job by Antonio. He's doing a good job around the daylight. That's enough for a uh, I'm on one. So that's why the clock is stopped because they pick up the first. Clock will stop, which now means it is first and goal inside the nine. On that stop of the last play, Javante Abernathy showing his defensive skills as well. He wants to win this football game. He's got the only touchdown in this football game. He wants to keep it Here comes Fred. Look at the outside. As he breaks the tape. He breaks the tape. Wow. No luck now, but we are tied at Collinwood Field. All right. Luce is bringing home the mail. Just a, just a straight dive, really, and just tell him just look for daylight. The big fella has the ball in the right hand, and he sees green, and he goes for it. Nobody uncontained out there. And even if they were, if it was just one person, I like Lucius's eyes against theirs. Great, great call. So, partner, your theory about all the talent going to score. Yeah. Folks, you at home couldn't get a better game. And there we look at him, Christopher Lucius. The right guard defensive tackle number 99. Again, an eighth grader out of Kenneth Clement likes the Browns in Miles Garrett. Very excited about, about Lucius and his future, Tim. Eighth grader on his way to high school. Uh, man, I just hope he picks the right, uh, the right combination for himself and his family, and he's ready to work hard in and outside the classroom, on the field and off the field. Uh, so we can watch him play for for years and years to come. And one of the things we haven't talked about all day is, is that the Cleveland Clinic medical staff is on the field volunteering today so that they're able to take care of these injuries and look at somebody right away so we know that the kids are going to be taken care of. And again, our special thanks to the Cleveland Clinic 
being out here today, volunteering their time in the Muni Football League. It's a beautiful community that we have. To, uh, that uh, has tentacles all throughout the city of Cleveland and our surrounding suburbs. I believe our city, as the mayor would say, is a good city can be great if we all come together for the good of everyone else. And we're working toward it. We're working toward it. We want to make it happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is a wonderful, a wonderful, wonderful way to make it happen, too. Oh, they got him jumping. Now you're going to go half the distance. This is huge. So now you're going to go to the one and a half. Oh, wow. I thought it was the offense. I'm looking at it here. It looked like that person moved. They put it on the defense. So now. Okay, yeah, they put on the defense as initiating it, okay. So this is going to be a tough call and a big call. They're going to try to oh, run it. Big oh, big fellow! Oh, my! Oh, oh wow! Good. Light to the field! With one minute, 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And, and it just, it's, it just goes in easy, Tim. Right there, just a oh good job blocking. Lord. That's a good job blocking right there. Hey, they're thinking, right, it's going to take three of them to bring him down. <laughs> good job blocking by the Cobras offensive line. That, He's I, got a little bit of that dance, too, in the end zone. You see that little waddle back and forth? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He got some skills. He's got some skills. He's ready to celebrate now. He scored the touchdown. He's got the extra point. Uh, he's, he's eyeing up those trophies that uh, our good friend Edwin Santiago just brought off the field, thinking he might get more than one. So here we are. First down and 35. Take a look at the Collinwood Cobra's huddle. I mean, this is uh, kind of unprecedented, Tim. Like I mentioned, uh, founded in 2018. Here we are in 2021 after a one skip season in 2020, and the Cobras are already in the uh, in the championship. And uh, looks like uh, they might be pulling it off here today. But I'm pretty sure that Mr. Abernathy. Uh, Mr. Atkins and Mr. Steele has something to say about that before time runs out. And John, when you're talking about football organizations, you talk about the whole gamut. You know, uh, we got the cheerleaders, the cheerleading coaches. Mm -hmm. You got the team moms. You got the assistant coaches. You got the head coach. You got the coordinator organization, the assistant organization. A lot of people in that community are putting their heart and soul out here as volunteers. And I don't think anywhere in the country, and I'm saying that because this is what I believe. If I'm wrong, you can point it to me. But to have these many kids, that many people volunteering their time for the Cleveland Muni football program, you got to look at it and say, this is a miracle story in the city of Cleveland. It is. It really is, Tim, especially with the Cleveland Public Schools not having a football program for uh, young men in the area or young ladies in cheerleading on that level. Uh, we have replaced uh, that uh, missing component, and uh, I think we've, uh, we've, we've fit the bill. We've, we've, we've stood up to the challenge. Uh, we meet the community needs and wants and uh, provide a, a safe place to uh, play the game of football organized. And we want to thank all the parents and all the volunteers and all the coaches. Uh, everybody who's involved on, on, the, on the transition side, as we take a look at this play. Uh oh. Here I'm we go. Showing his skills. He's got, oh, here he's we got go. Some, he's got some room to. He made it out of bounds. Did he stop the clock? Big game on the play by number one, Devontae Abernathy. He did stop the clock. Okay. Yeah. Take a look at the instant replay. You know you got to wrap this guy up. He's got a great stiff arm. Carrying the ball on the inside hand, it should be on the outside. 
but he's squeezing it tight and there's no threat. Puts his head down, runs out of bounds to stop the clock with 113 left to go. 110, excuse me, left to go in the ball game. But I was a mention to him the contrasting side of the of the of the uh, of the picture here today is we got a young organization in the Cobras, but then you got the Garden Valley Falcons who's been around since '93. Uh, 26 years, all in Muni football, original founders, Queen Cuff and Ray Petaway. Uh, current director is Danny Solomon, who's been there since 01. Has great alumni, Demar McCall, Troy Boykins, uh, Devontae Brooks, Devontae Payne, Marcus Moore, and many other uh, professionals in, in, in all different types of walks of life. And everybody on their coaching staff, all the head coaches are current, uh, are alumni of the program. So they know what the community needs, they know what these players need, and they provide it for them each and every, every day during the football season, flag and contact. And we take a look here at the instant replay of the fumble, and it looked like a penalty on the play as well. This is exciting, Tim. 39 seconds left to go. We got playmakers on the field. Anything can happen. Like that. That big Lucius. You better believe it. Oh, that is Buddy. That's his buddy. 92. Seven, six, 27 seconds to go. Garden Valley and right trails by one. All scoring done in the fourth quarter. They're trying to get to the outside. Oh, great tackle. Brought down. Great tackle. And a huge tackle. By number. Made up for Ellison's mistake right there. Better believe it. Garden job. Valley calls time. Yeah, that was just a great play, great defensive play right there. They need it right there. You can see him number two. Uh, and take a look at the instant replay. You know, we know how slick Abernathy can be. He does the right thing, gathered his feet, went in pursuit, and went for those legs, and was able to come up with him on the field as well. But the clock kept on running until they were able to get a timeout. And it looked like Collinwood's going to come away with their first championship in this 12U uh, division, Tim. Well, they got five seconds to go. You got to think they're going to throw. Got to throw here. When you think that, John? Yeah, I would think they'd try to throw, but definitely Abernathy will have the ball in his hands to try to make a play. I won't put it past them. I, I would I would really be trying to work that Abernathy to steal type of uh, combination. Throw Atkins in there, you really you got a really sound threat. We'll see how uh, disciplined this Collinwood defense is gonna be. It should be the last player to play of the game. These Cobra fans are really excited about the opportunity to get a first championship. They're saying put eight seconds on the clock. All right, we got the eight seconds up. Again, going over the Garden Valley history and accomplishments in their, in their program, they have a 2010 Midget Championship, 2014 and 2015 Termite uh, Championship, uh, 2019 Junior and Pee Wee Flag Football Championship, Pee Wee City Championship in 19, and in 2019, they also were the Midwest uh, region runner-ups in Pee Wee. So the program is definitely regionally, nationally known uh, in flag football, competing against some of the top teams uh, from around the country in Arizona and California. Garden Valley is definitely have a, a reputation, a fine play and sportsmanship. Uh, with the uh, Danny Solomon 
really preaches and marches to every single day. Uh, it looks like they're trying to get something straight here on the field. The referees are in conversation with both head coaches. We're going to try to finish this game out on top. You take a look at the, some of the coaches from the Collarwood Cobras, including the owner there, Darnell Banks. Pretty sure he's proud of his efforts of his staff and his players today. And while we have this game going on, the championships going on today, there'll be games played in the near future to see who makes it to the finals. In the Bantam, Pee Wee, Junior, and Termite divisions in the Muni Championship Football Series. Looks like uh, all lines of communication are clear. Trophy presentation. First and second place. Yeah, they when they box them, they just throw everything in one box. He just gives the signal. It looks like he's asking for nine seconds. Eighteen seconds. Okay. All right, the Collarwood Cobras, they don't like that. They don't like that at all. I wouldn't like it either if a guy like Abernathy was <laughs> at the helm of the opponent. <laughs> you see Justin Chamber runs over and takes his spot. Abernathy's back to throw. He's got man open, but he can't see him. He squirts through. He missed him. Missed the tackle right there. Squirts out of bounds. Got 11 seconds to go, Tim. He ran out of bounds. They ran out of bounds and they added it again. Should be 11 seconds on the clock. I'm pretty sure they ran out of bounds. 11 seconds on the clock. Okay. Got the 11 seconds up there. Good job. Uh, timeout, or they trying to figure out where the ball is? No, he ran. He ran out. I saw that. Mm -hmm. I saw the arms go up. All right, third down. We might have two more plays in this game, Tim. Might be the last one, depending on how long they want to drag it out. This is where the quick passing game comes into play. Delay of game. Wow. That was quick. He blew the whistle. Third down on the box. It's been an exciting game. Man in motion. Oh, big Lucius came right up the middle. Oh, and the blocker. Looks like that might do it. They were able to get a third. Able to get a timeout in before three seconds ran off the board. That's it. What a ball game. Huh? 
Great way to start off this championship series. Close game. The Collinwood Cobras coming up with their first championship in their, used in their, in their existence. So, folks, when we come back, we'll have the presentation of the awards right after this timeout. Need food? We can help. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank's Benefits Outreach Department works within the community to help individuals locate food and apply for SNAP and other public benefits. Weekdays, our help center accepts phone calls from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and walk-ins from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 216-738-2067 or stop in our facility at 15500 South Waterloo Road. Our benefits outreach counselors are out in the community every day assisting with benefit enrollment and connecting the community to vital resources. Keep your eye out for our food truck, providing free, fresh produce and SNAP enrollment in the community. For more information, visit www.greaterclevelandfoodbank.org slash get help. This is Jason Dunn, down in the field, league director. I have one question for all the fans here today in attendance. Were you guys entertained? This was another heavyweight showdown between the Collinwood Cobras and Garden Valley Falcons. Seven to six. Same score during the regular season when they played the first Cleveland Browns next game of the week. This game definitely lives up to the hype and I want you to give it up for both programs. So first off, we have an outstanding award all right, for Garden Valley player on defense. Number two, Dyshawn Atkins. Dyshawn is a kid who's a dual threat, both offensively and defensively. Today, he accounted for five solos, a few other assisted tackles, two tackles for loss, and a few big stops on third down. Dyshawn, you are our first 12U Junior Bandit Division Defensive Player of the Game. You want to talk about your performance, Dyshawn? I want, I want to thank my coach for getting me here. If it was for them, I wouldn't be here. And Dyshawn, I know firsthand your coaches definitely believe in you. You've been out here uh, during flag football, seven on seven, and now tackle. What have this season meant to you? Everything. There we go. So our 2021 defensive MVP, Dyshawn. Now, I'm going to present the 2021 12U Junior Banding Division runner-up trophy. This will go to the Garden Valley Falcons coordinator and head coach, Danny Solomon. Now, now Danny, this was a new, a new division for us, our, our first time you know, doing this. A few years ago, we went unlimited weight. You know, now fast forward, we have the 12 year olds in their own division. What did it mean to you this year to keep this group of kids together from when they were peewees through the spring flag football 707 to now? Uh, Jason, it meant a lot. I just want to say uh, congratulations first to Collinwood, Buck, great organization, great game. Congratulations on uh, winning the championship. Uh, when it, um, it meant a great deal. Um, just so everyone knows, this team, yeah, first year playing 12U, I had a, uh, about nine 12-year-olds, but I had about 13 11-year-olds. So this team behind you has 13 11-year-olds and nine 12-year-olds. And it, for them to fight this hard and make it to the 12U championship with primarily a peewee team, it, it meant a lot to me and my coaches uh, for this season. So I want to thank you guys, yourself, your entire coaching staff, the Garden Valley community, 
And you have it here, your 2021 Junior Bantam 12 Euro Division runner-ups. I am now down in the field in front of your 2021 12U Junior Bantam Division City Champs, Collinwood Cobras. So I'm gonna start the award ceremony off on the Collinwood Cobras side. We have an outstanding offensive player of the game and for everybody who watched this game, you could count A. Hey, I think he was a fan favorite on either side of the ball. Number 99, Chris Lucius. Come up here and talk to me. Okay. Now, Chris, I, I heard a reference up in the press box, and you might know nothing about this guy. When the first time you touched the ball, I heard refrigerator. You, you know who that is? Refrigerator Perry. So you, you, hey, your nickname in the press box is Refrigerator Perry. You too young, I need you to Google that. All right, so Chris Lucius had 28 yards rushing. He also had a touchdown and the game winning extra point. So Chris, planning this game and being part of this team, what did it mean to you this year? It mean everything, all the, all the practices, everything we did in practice, it all led up to this. And as you can see, it paid off. Okay, would you like to thank anybody today? Uh, thank all my coaches, my mom, my dad, all of my family, yeah. Okay, well, your 2021 Offensive MVP, Chris Lucius. All right, now, I want to present the 2021 Junior Bantamweight 12U Division City Championship Trophy to head coach, Mike Crutchfield. Mike, could you join me up here? What's going on, coach? Okay. You can, you can go ahead and get your hands on it. Okay. So, Mike, it's, it's been a grind for you guys all year. You know, starting off, once again, you were another program that participated in 707 flag football. Uh, to go out there and, and recruit kids and to actually get the kids to buy into your system, the philosophy, uh, what the program wanted to do. You know, how hard, how hard was that or how tough was it to get to this point today? I mean, it was pretty tough, but you know, we work hard every day, you know what I'm saying? And then we play t guys like this. They gave us a hell of a game the first time and same, same this time, you know? So, but I got a good group of guys, man. You know what I'm saying? They really pay attention to detail. They, they legit. Right. Now, no, no good team can be here today playing for a championship if it wasn't for the support of the parents. Let's talk about how instrumental the parents were to making sure the kids made the practice on time, the kids did what they had to do to stay eligible and, and make the grades in the classroom. We got the best set of parents, you know. They, they stick out. They, they have them there. I know, you know, sometimes we keep them longer than we're supposed to keep them, but they really helped out. And also, our coaches staff, you know, all the coaches, everybody that's here, you know what I'm saying? We like one unit. CC, Belinda, the staff, we put in a lot of work, man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it, Coach. So, your 2021 Junior Bantam 12U Division City Champs, Collinwood Cobras. I'm gonna toss it back up to you, Tim. Well, again, thank you, Jason. And uh, you definitely hit it on the head when you talk about two outstanding teams that played here today. And, you know, John, when we talk about these two teams, we're gonna say they put on quite a show. Yeah, we did, Tim. We will say that, and we'll also remember the uh, the efforts of this uh, Garden Valley Falcons team that they put up today with Abernathy, all those guys, um, along with Atkins and Steele, their key players. But they brought the whole team, made a few mistakes at the wrong time, and the uh, Cobras were able to capitalize, bring home their first championship uh, trophy. And obviously, uh, before we leave, 
we'd like to remind you folks that next week we'll be right back here at Collinwood Field for the 10U Championship. Again, these are youngsters 10 and under, and we'll see the Southside Panthers and the South Euclid Arcs. And again, uh, two outstanding teams. And again, it's a new division they started, 10U. John will be here to talk about it, and also with Jason Dunn. But for today, we're going to take a look at some of the great plays and some of the great faces that were part of the 2021 Junior Bantamweight Championship. Again, the final score, the Collinwood Cobras 7, the Garden Valley Falcons 6. For John Good, I'm Tim Wells. Good night, everyone.